थैंक यू भावना एंड सिंस इज द लास्ट सेशन ऑफ टूडेज कॉन्फ्रेंस एंड वी स्टैंड बिटवीन यू एंड योर वेल डिजर्व अवार्ड्स द एम इज टू डिलीवर एन साइटफुल सेशन सो द टॉपिक ऑफ टूडेज डिस्कशन इज द पावर ऑफ साउंड लेवरेजिंग ऑडियो टू बिल्ड एंड स्ट्रेंथन ब्रांड्स इन टूडेज वर्ल्ड ऑफ ब्रांडिंग एडवांस इन ऑडियो टेक्नोलॉजी हैव चेंज हाउ वी कनेक्ट विद लिसनर्स फ्रॉम ओल्ड स्कूल रेडियो टू इंट्रैक्टिव पॉडकास्ट एंड स्ट्रीमिंग सर्विसेज साउंड गोज बियॉन्ड जस्ट हियरिंग इट लीव लास्टिंग इम्प्रेशन बिल्ड लॉयल्टी एंड अफेक्ट्स हाउ पीपल चूज एंड यू नो डिसाइड सो आई स्टार्ट विद अतुल एंड मोना एंड you know i want to start with in the world of convergence of media how does radio which is among the oldest media is holding its own place if atul if you can start okay uh, thank you very much uh, since morning i have learned that radio is not an old medium so uh, fm broadcasting in india is just about 2024 years old so as compared to tv print etc we not old uh, having said that uh, really there are two perspectives to look at one uh, from a radio broadcaster perspective and the other from a radio as a medium perspective uh, from a radio broadcaster perspective uh, the answer lies in the question itself the convergence of media is the answer how does a radio broad broadcaster expand itself to cater to newer mediums uh, depending on its core strengths so if it is a influencer management program can we use our rjs if it is podcasts it's like second nature to us so how does the radio broadcaster expand its own horizons that's the way in which uh, all the radio broadcasters i guess are trying to get into from a radio as a medium itself uh, it's about being true to the medium is it is the is the brand objective something that radio as a medium can do or is it something that it's better for other mediums to take on so you have to be a little choosy in those uh, perspectives are we creating content which is for awareness and hence frequency led is it for engagement and hence storytelling led so that is something that the radio industry has also to understand uh, music for example are we playing music uh, like uh, streaming channels which is uh, algorithmic playlists or are we, are we keeping a element of surprise for which the radio uh, is known so based on these two things i think from a broadcaster perspective how to expand and from radio as a, uh, a medium using in it in it in its purest sense these are two, two, two things that help uh, broadcasters to keep today uh, to relevant in today's world mona would you like to add something yeah, i'll just quickly add and uh, we've had enough uh, you know conversations around this topic also since morning uh, uh, a lot of dignitary speakers have already spoken about it uh, actually if you see there is no battle between the other uh, media vehicles that there uh, that are there and radio uh, you know everything has to beautifully coexist and therefore uh, the fact that we are continuously talking about that radio has over a period of time evolved the evolution has definitely happened in radio and in today's day and age we cannot say that radio is just radio it is it has become so much more plus 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 uh, radio has become not only for audio entertainment it has also become social media it has also become live edit entertainment it has also got into podcasting it has got a wealth of rich creators as the uh, you know uh, as a foundation stone of this industry that we can branch out into anywhere possible where uh, you know where there is a story to be told uh, you know my uh, yeah, uh, just uh, two sessions before uh, there was a conversation that was happening between abe and ramesh and ramesh very clearly spoke about it uh, you know and mentioned that we have become content creators doesn't matter we are platform agnostic so the convergence is convergence is definitely going to happen and it is happening multimedia multi platform wherever the brand is asking us to tell a story we are ready we have our hands and legs ready we can tell a story in any medium you want us uh, you know to perform 
thank you mona and i think you rightly said radio has become like it's radio plus 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 uh, so jay like uh, i just have a couple sure, of points sorry sure. i mean uh, just couple of points to add to what uh, mona just mentioned and i think uh, uh, two or three points which are essentially that has happened over a period of journey that we see radio how it has evolved from am fm to now what podcast or video ca- video cast is what is the word that uh, mantra use right so uh, essentially there are three things to my mind that has happened one of course is how radio has able to integrate itself into digital ecosystem so obviously off late all of us know that any of the radio channel that you look at today the leading radio channels everything is available either on their web pages so the live stream is uh, what is available so accessibility has suddenly gone up so obviously that is one big thing big change that radio guys have been able to adapt to uh, second is uh, what you spoke and i just thought it's it's good to add from a brand side, brand side or from the client side essentially how we speak about right so i typically as a brand we also look at uh, what is the plus thing that also comes through with radio so it is not only uh, one as a listening medium that you know so it's not only to do with the jingle that i have created or the advertise that i have created but it's also how radio has been able to evolve itself into radio plus so today radio is radio plus social media radio plus uh, you know your your content pieces radio plus video podcast that you have been able to curate through so yeah it's a interesting journey that way uh, definitely it's evolution that radio as a medium has been able to conduct itself through so i think it's it's a great journey i would i would certainly add to that Thank you so much. That's a great thumbs up from the other side of the table. <laughs> so, Jay, would you like to add, you know, like from a marketing perspective, yeah. how good of a marketing tool radio can be? Yeah, I am a slightly controversial contender out here. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so well, it's and I'm currently speaking from what I currently, you know, managing the mandate for. Right? It's not that I haven't used radio in the past. Of course, I have used radio a lot. In fact, you know, in my earlier stints, radio was a very, very important medium for us because we were talking to a certain set of a certain cohort of audience that was extremely, you know, um, readily available on on that platform. Uh, in fact, to the extent, and I wouldn't want to take it to radio. In fact, audio itself, you know, for example, in my earlier stint, we've created a platform for. Uh, media dark geographies but media dark is not any more a question now because of the proliferation of internet but for media dark geographies we heavily dependent ourselves on audio format uh, where you know we created a platform for users to get onto and then uh, you know listen to audio content because that was the only way to reach out to them uh, as a, at, even radios at channels and platforms were not available there and uh, they could just dial a number and listen to some very interesting audio content Uh, and therein we could actually place our brand right so audio as a medium has been fantastic and i think it still continues to be in its uh, you know in its new avatar whether it's podcast or whether it is uh, any other influencer led activity that leads to audio uh, but in like for example my current mandate where i am speaking to slightly i think top of the pyramid kind of an audience right uh, which is where i think the value of radio as a medium has probably diminished because of the digital proliferation that has happened and they are default destination to get to any content right and the default destination to get to any content is largely video or for that matter the internet now that could be anything that could be it, it could be social media it could be streaming sites it could be you know uh, streaming platforms like music and stuff like that uh, and that is where i have had uh, you know um, my partners coming and not really pitching the platform of radio to me as much as they would for another brand altogether so that's the scenario that i live in currently uh, nothing against the platform nothing against the medium i think the medium has evolved fantastically well but whether it is right now available for my audience is is a bit of a question right now that i am dabbling with right so that's i think the way that we look at it from from our marketing spends on radio okay chandan so i think uh, radio i have found memories you know so radio i think has rediscovered itself in different ways and means we have seen innovation happening and today audio for that matter spans into radio into podcast into digital audio as well right uh, 
uh, I think there are three points that come to my mind as to what is driving relevance and what will continue to drive relevance relevance for audio media. You know, so at a personal level, obviously, when I'm when I'm driving to and from work, you know, uh, and when when my eyes are completely glued onto the road and the vehicle in front of me, you know, uh, audio and uh, radio is all that I want to you know keep myself engaged with life every day, right? Uh, second, I I would say that you know it's a very it's a flexible media. You know it allows you to uh, you know do both top of the funnel and bottom of the funnel <coughs> activities, marketing activities. You can run an awareness campaign. You can also do a conversion campaign. Very effective in that sense. Uh, scale, obviously, uh, I'm not comparing scale at this point in time, right? Third piece, I think, which is which is gonna continue. Uh, driving relevance for radio is that you know the core of radio is music and storytelling okay and uh, and both are inherently positive and uplifting in that sense for the audience right and when the audience in is, is in a positive state of mind he is generally more receptive to an advertisement right so it's an it's a media which kind of is is has 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 your audience you know with ready to harvest attention in meaningful ways, right? It's up to the the marketing guy or the brands to understand what is the brand task that they have that radio can help them achieve. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you know, so when we look at uh, so, firstly, let us understand that how do we how do we comprehend a message? You know, so from a brand team, we typically look at advertising is nothing but a consumer messaging that I'm trying to do. So. I mean, this is my personal opinion, of course, is as long as listening or hearing is an integral part of message comprehension, any form of audio medium will stand true. Okay, so because unless you have a comprehension of that particular message, so where you are seeing, you are listening, both happening together, that of course gives us the best scope of comprehending the message that the brand wants to talk to you or through to the audience. So from that context, Radio, of course, uh, makes a lot of sense, uh, or any of the audio medium makes a lot of sense. Uh, if I have to look at how we would evaluate this as a medium, firstly, let's let's articulate that it's a medium that I want to evaluate in terms of is it a great marketing tool that I want to use for the campaign that we are in, we are we are you know kind of looking at uh, actioning. So there are four or five things which typically we would look at at our end as to whether it is delivering on those parameters. So you t you you end up looking at what is the reach, what is the capability to build frequency on that particular medium. Uh, is there a cost angle which is substantially different or is comparatively in that context? Uh, are you looking at a medium which allows you to do some kind of a innovation essentially? So is there a possibility of this medium offering me a scope to innovate, scope to engage further with the TG that we are talking to. And lastly and uh, more importantly off late is what is the possibility of a localization or a, you know linguistic uh, issues that I can address with. So when I look at these four or five parameters and uh, you know we start evaluating mediums. Uh, radio would score there, to my mind. I think uh, what you mentioned, of course, uh, that's, and that's that's the evaluation as a brand that we end up doing. That you know, whether this particular medium suits or you know helps me score higher on all these four or five parameters. So when we look at radio as a medium, reach to my mind is not a questionable affair. Of course, it is one of the most reached medium per se. Radio has been that way. In fact, uh, All India Radio, if I'm not wrong, talks about 99% kind of a coverage, uh, which is what. So reach is not a is not a question when it comes to radio as a medium. Uh, in terms of building frequencies, uh, what I have typically observed, and this is again stemming more from how I consume radio, more of little more personal biases. But we typically end up liking a radio channel or liking a radio show. You know, so. If I am able to understand that, okay, this is how my audience has been engaged with, and if I can curate and uh, you know build build content around those pieces, which is either a show or that radio channel. So, for example, there is a radio channel which speaks essentially the oldies. You know, so is it it usually uh, you know speak about old songs. So, I mean, is that the audience cohort that I am looking at? So then 
I get that uh, understanding with the consumer and then I can build frequencies. What Mona mentioned very interestingly is radio is today not only radio, it is radio plus. So there is a plethora of engagement, plethora of innovation that exists today as far as radio as a medium is concerned. So I would evaluate these four or five uh, parameters and then uh, you know kind of come to conclusion that okay this is my objective and uh, these are the four or five parameters on which radio as a medium scores or it doesn't score for that matter and then I will look at it as a tool. Okay. Yeah. Bhavin? So when you, when you talk about strategically, <clears throat> first you define whether you want to go tactical or you want to build saliency for the brand. Uh, it works both ways. Uh, you know, radio, if you want to build tactically, you will always want to go for reach. Uh, but at the same time, if you want to build saliency for a brand, you will start building more conversations on radio. That's where people want to be more engaging. People want to interact with your brand. And I think radio is one of the oldest medium that was the most interactive. Uh, I remember in 2010, uh, when you have a print ad, a consumer could not talk to the print ad or give a feedback or uh, a television ad. But radio is something that listens to their uh, listeners as well. It's a two-way interaction. And that is where uh, having this medium as a two-way, either you want to go for a reach, it's simple, you take five radio channels, four radio channels, bombard them with FCTs and you get additional plus plus as well. Or if you want to create a property or an IP, build a brand, build conversations around it, that's where most engaging is what I feel radios become. In fact, radio seems to be a little more progressive in today's time. It's been pretty progressive since a long time. Uh, the first ever influencers uh, were the radio jockeys, right? I mean, people really wanted to meet them. Uh, you know, I started off my career in radio. I know so many calls. And people used to literally wait outside to meet either uh, some of the other RJs. Well, they were the first influencers. Today, we've got a plethora of influencers. But let's not forget, radio is plus plus for a reason that all these progressive points have also evolved from radio as well. So, yeah, that's my take on how radio as a medium for brand. Jahan? So, I would say that radio in isolation is not something which we would look as a market here. Uh, there needs to be some element of, you know, omni-channel strategy and having cross interaction between the channels, be it like uh, integration of radio with digital or any offline activity for that matter, uh, has its own benefits. Uh, like we have seen in some specific audience set uh, from our pharma standpoint, uh, they have reacted uh, to radio in a very nicer way where they have seen that the primary uh, first-hand information is being uh, decimated by radio as a channel. Whereas for the other younger set of audience, that wasn't the case. So I would say that, you know, uh, because it was an integrated approach, we had something offline. Whatever people heard on radio, they later came and inquired about it in the offline channel. So that integration helped us. And that's the reason I would say that radio has an element to surprise. Uh, it did surprise me. And yeah. Actually, I would just add to the, that point, uh, uh, there is in fact a Nielsen study which says that if you uh, use radio in, uh, uh, in integration with your other uh, marketing tools, uh, media vehicles, the efficacy of your conversion increases by one person. So uh, these, you know, so of course, when you are doing radio in silo, it might, depending on what is your uh, brand objective, what is your uh, uh, you know, business objective, it will do that much. But if you're integrating it in a larger media plan, there are chances that it would amplify the larger objective, which is the conversion at the end of it. So it works both ways, like you said. It, it works top of the funnel as so well we as... So we can't have radio just as an isolation as well. No, I like I say, said, yeah. radio yeah. has become plus, plus, plus. Yes. So in yes. radio also, there is so much need more to integrate it to with other channels. Explore. Yeah, for sure. Sorry, I love radio, so I cannot leave the question hanging, which uh, Sujay said. Uh, 
if you want me to quote ram which is like a trusted uh, measurement uh, tool 20 to 25 percent audience in our morning shows is secca if you add secb to it it's about 40 percent which is a sizable number if you look at if you even cut it further, look at ACC A1, that's about 10 to 12 percent, which is again a very huge amount of uh, numbers that you will get. So, uh, it is about choosing the right program, right channel, as uh, he was saying, and then uh, looking for a solution that will appeal to your audience. So, it's about building that community through your RJ on a channel. Uh, before you react, I'll just do, tell you one more thing. Uh, in fact, uh, let's break down radio. What does radio really mean? For me, it's about the five words or five alphabets, R-A-D-I-O. And I love acronyms, so I'm going to just indulge me for a minute. What is there not to love about radio? <laughs> it's just the question that you ask, uh, how is it a marketing tool? Or does it feature in your mix or not? R is for reach. Nobody can beat uh, the reach that radio provides. And 99% according to... Uh, all India Radio and about 80% in metros for the private broadcasters. And it's hyper-local. Go to any village. Big FM alone covers about 19,000 19, villages across the country. Then um, A. A is for adapt. The adapt is how does radio adapt to various geographies and various communities or TG. We speak to people in their own language. We showcase them their own songs. We choose topics that are relevant to them. And it's not like one channel presenting the same um, uh, content across the country. It's about each station of our uh, network talking to that person in that geography. D is for depth. Depth, think about uh, 100 or so RJs talking about your brand continuously for 30 days, three times a day. And that's the kind of depth you will get on the content. Because every time the radio jockey cannot go and say about the same, talk about the same thing. He will bring in an uh, expert. He will bring in Vox Pop. He will bring in a celebrity. And that's how you get depth on the content. I is for influence. And thank you very much. Uh, radio jockeys are the OG influencers. Rajesh, give it up for you. Uh, I think uh, it's, it's about... Creating a balance, bringing them from behind the mic to in front of the camera. If we are able to do that, then we have the best uh, influencers in the country. Uh, o is basically, and that was a difficult one, so uh, it's for organized and at the same time a bit compartmentalized. When I say that, uh, I mean uh, there is a content for everybody on the same channel, whether it is devotional in the morning whether it is some content for the office folk in the morning and drive time shows, whether it is the housewife, which is the 12 to 3 slot predominantly on radio, the youth of the country, that's the early evening slot, to Rahul Makin's show, which is the night slot, a completely different audience. So it is organized, but it is at the same time uh, compartmentalized. So I don't really see what is not there to love on radio. Uh, that, that's, that's the bit I wanted to talk to you about. It's about selecting the right show, selecting the right channel, and creating a community for your TG on it. No, I completely buy your point. Uh, I have no doubt about that. Uh, but here is, the, here is the situation, right? This is the scenario. Um, we are, like I said, the top of the pyramid. Uh, we are trying to talk to the UHNI audience. Now, Abhi, when I kind of roll out a brief to a media company and I tell them, hey, here, partner, uh, this is my objective, this is what I need to do, this is what, uh, you know, is my campaign, this is what uh, is my, you know, overall uh, objective to achieve. Uh, I, by default, didn't get the medium as a part of the plan. Now, on asking, okay, what happened to this this medium? It was an interesting, important medium for a very long time. And the partner himself is actually of the opinion that maybe you should be on streaming apps. Now, even the measurement out there is even more difficult, right? I don't know how can I measure my content, how can I measure the effectiveness of what I'm going to put my monies on, on a streaming app. But there is a certain amount of, you know, uh, what do I say, 
for this audience that I am kind of wanting to reach out to, uh, uh, saying, okay, maybe that's not your priority Absolutely. medium right I now. I agree with that. And that's Atul, where Atul, the Atul, plus sorry, plus comes in. Sorry to interrupt, uh, because we are running short on time. I would like to, because uh, he spoke about the measurement, so I would, you know, like to ask you, how would you, you know, evaluate the effectiveness of radio campaigns? And you should ask this to him or someone else because I use that medium less actually more than I do. I can answer to that. Yeah, sure. uh, this is one question that ponders upon to us as a marketeers yes. and we always have debates with the brand teams where please go beyond reach. Please don't come to me and talk about just having 4 million, 5 million reach or whatever the number is because that's not going to be success in today's era. Uh, the yardstick to measure effectiveness of radio should be, at least in our world, the pharma world, we say that has the conversations between doctors and patients increased in the clinic. So if that has happened, I can even attribute that success through radio. Uh, there can be something where patients are looking for a particular uh, you know, topic or a disease therapy. That can be attributed to success. The number of people talking or discussing about it, that can be a measurement or a yardstick to measure the effectiveness. So having just a reach and impressions in today's world is not going to work and I feel that radio has a lot of room to improve in these aspects where we can at least attribute that success if we have to spend on radio, it needs to be beyond these uh, reach and impressions. So that's that's what. Chandan, uh, Bhavan, anyone? So, I think while while we all discuss about how effective is the media, I think as a marketer, the first thing that I, I ask myself is how effective is my piece of communication? You know, is it insightful? Is it meaningful? Is it engaging? Right? Uh, do I have enough right brain features in my piece of content? You know, which will inspire and engage the audience? You know, to react. In, in the desired manner. So first thing is obviously is to be honest to yourself whether your content has that pull, that power to you know uh, capture people's imagination and attention. Second piece is obviously when we embark on a media campaign, right? Uh, like uh, uh, my fellow panelists said that you know in isolation it doesn't work, right? And uh, and uh, there is there is a recent research that that has been unveiled by Mark Ritson, and he says that you know brands with positive ESOV, right? Uh, if they add radio alongside with other media, it will have large brand effects, right? At a very modest amount of investment, right? So you can definitely generate that plus plus, right? You can ge definitely get incremental reach at a much lesser cost, right? Uh, and you can obviously amplify because on other media, it may be very expensive to explain the product, right? It becomes far easier on media like radio Right, wherein you can engage and you can reveal more about the product, right? And obviously then there has to be predefined KPIs, whether you are measuring the performance on, on brand metric, whether you are measuring the performance of the campaign on engagement rates, you know, conversation, how much of that is happening, okay? So, so it, it, it has to be thought through in a holistic way and obviously it will be guided fundamentally by your brand objective. What is your objective? I feel it's simple. Uh, if you're looking to uh, hit the top of funnel, you go with a hammer strategy, end of the day. It's not just one medium, you go with multiple mediums and radio should be a part of that plan. Uh, it's as simple as that. Uh, like, if, like we say on digital today, you just don't do a meta ad. You do not only meta, you do Google, you do the other ad networks and plus, plus, plus. It's the same way in the ATL as well, you just don't do print. You do print as well as an outdoor, as well as a radio. It's a four-time frequency, often visible medium. A consumer tomorrow will not come up to you and tell you he saw your ad or heard you. They'll, they will know about you. That's more important. So yes, radio should be a part of your plan. When you're looking at a top of funnel, and we all know it, top of funnel is expensive, but we always try to go for bottom of funnel because we're being conservative with our spends. In fact, to your point, uh, Chandan, what you started doing now is understanding the brand metrics from the client, and we're doing pre-post studies yeah. with Nielsen or other people, so that 
we can show you the power of the campaign and power of the medium. So whether it's awareness, whether it's engagement, loyalty, whatever is the metric of the campaign, we do a pre-study in some of the markets and then do a post-study to make you feel what is the stretch that we have taken. And yeah. What's the impact question it's here, uh, you know, when we say plus plus, I'm just uh, wanting, I'm just very curious out here. The audience still remains the same, right? The fact of the matter is that, okay, I was first reaching out to this audience through the medium of audio, through which is through radio, but then I moved to the digital platform to catch hold of a similar audience or a lookalike audience in that zone. And then I move to, say, another platform, say, for example, I go, I become a little more uh, in terms of, so, yeah, in fact, you have a smile on your face, I want to quickly hear you. Because I want to uh, Because quickly. I think that will actually solve the mystery for all of us, right? No, so actually, uh, very valid uh, observation. However, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's almost like, you know, the moment you are, so for example, you are doing a multi, uh, uh, multimedia communication or ad campaign. Uh, you, uh, you have taken, you have a bigger TG of course, you have a larger TG in mind. However, then you dissect the TG into multiple cohorts and you sharpen your communication basis the platform that you're using. So you would be using print for a certain TG cohort communication. So there would be a mix that is where print would be more pertinent. Similarly, there would be a mix where digital and meta campaigns would be more pertinent. The similar logic also applies to radio. When from a radio fraternity, if I'm only on broadcast or airwaves, I'm reaching out to a certain section or strata of society. The moment I shift to social, the social platform any which way is governed by youth, Gen Z, predominantly, all right? I'm not saying the higher age band is not there, but predominantly is, uh, it's by the digital native, which is the youth, Gen Z, uh, 24 to 35 is the age band that is there sitting in, uh, you know, social. So the TG drastically changes. Uh, while in radio, Maybe that ratio changes from, uh, you know, working professionals in the morning to, uh, you know, housewives in the afternoon to college goers in the, you know, pre-evening uh, band, then again uh, office goers in the evening band and late evening it's again youth who are hooked on to because late evening you would have programs like Love Sex Dhoka, your Pyar Ka Panchnama, Love Guru and things like that who are talking about relationships and all. So that's how the TG diversifies through the day. However, the same thing happens when the moment you go to social media, there is a different cohort you are reaching out to. Now, there is a third aspect of it. The moment you go to a podcast, again, genre-wise, uh, you know, the specification changes. So if you are doing, a, a, you know, a, a self-help sort of a, a podcast, there would be a different uh, uh, section of audience that will be listening to you. Similarly, if it is mythology, if it is Ramayana, if it is Mahabharata, there would be a different uh, kind of people who would be listening. Maybe you would, uh, you know, uh, get certain other sections that these kind of uh, podcasts are most heard during the morning hours, during the evening hours, this is the age band and that is how, you know, the TG differs. Now, the, all of these are the plus plus that I'm talking about. The fourth plus is the live events that we do. Now, the live events is absolutely youngsters that we are reaching out to. I mean, uh, uh, these are uh, the new age uh, music artists who are, who want to actually talk to only the, the youth, the youngsters, again, if you're curating something as an IP, if you've created something for a little older age band, maybe you're reaching out to the entire family. So the mother, uh, the father with the kid is, you know, kind of frequenting to the festival. So the TG changes with every uh, plus, plus. avenue that you are opening. With up. every plus, there's a different TG that's could, There could be an overlap. But then there is a exclusive audience also which is sitting. Super. I asked your yeah. question maybe. That's okay. Our time is up and I think we did a good job in 30 minutes. <laughs> so thank you so much guys and uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks thank a you. lot. Thank you. Thank you.